Greetings programs, welcome to the grid. I am Sark and today's game is Distressed Wood. We've got our reference image here and we can see that there's a lot going on with the table. Uh, probably some layers of paint or maybe just some flour that's been worked in there. Uh, we're going to get to that uh, in the next video. We're going to do uh, a tutorial on blending different materials, but for starters we're going to need uh, a wood grain. And 3ds Max has some tools for procedural wood grain that work okay with the scanline renderer and work very well with things like V-Ray and um, Arnold, but uh, do not work, unfortunately, with the art renderer. Uh, but that's okay. Um, we only need one piece of wood, so we can go get something really bespoke. Um, I'm going to show how to do that in a minute. First, we need to prepare our object. So, I'm going to close the material editor. I'm going to right click on our table and hide unselected. And just going to do some quick and dirty modeling on this so that we can uh, so that we can get the detail into our object. So I'm going to add an edit poly layer. Grab the edge mode grab all of these edges that are facing this direction. If you can't get them all, you, you could just get one and then press ring. And that makes sure you have them all. And I'm going to connect those edges. I'm going to put two segments and I'm going to uh, pinch these apart so that they get pretty close down the end. Um, not 100% though, maybe like 98. That looks good to me. Okay. Same thing the other way. I'm going to press F4 so I can see my edge faces. I'm going to grab one of these, maybe one of the edges I just made. I'm going to hit ring and do the same thing the other way. This time 98 is too high, uh, so it's got to be more like 90. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. And then this one I actually want to make pretty, pretty extreme too. Whoops, what did I press? I want to connect these. And I'm going to set these ones to like 75. Eh, 65. Yeah, that'll be that'll probably be fine. So I've just basically reinforced these edges. Um, there are a lot of other ways to do it, but that's pretty quick and dirty. I'm going to apply an open subdiv. I'm going to apply a couple iterations. Iterations, iterations. Anybody know? Somebody somewhere knows. They're laughing. Okay. Um, so that's just given us enough definition on the edge that you can clearly tell where the edge is, but not so much that it's going to interrupt the flow of our texture. And you're going to see uh, what I intend in a minute. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the force perspective that we're using um, <laughs> to full effect. Uh, so rather than going to... I was thinking maybe we go into Affinity Photo or Photoshop or something and do a tileable texture, but it's, again, like it's one surface, the two surfaces that are facing us. So instead, I'm going to go to CG Textures. Uh, do I have... Yeah. So I went to CG Textures and I typed wood and I scrolled through until I found one I liked. And this will do. Uh, I went and downloaded it at a 1600 re resolution. Unfortunately they lock the higher resolutions behind premium. It would have been really nice to have it at like 5000. So I don't know at some point go go take your own reference photos for your library. <laughs> but that's a whole other it's a whole other project. Just take any of these. They're all fine. Um, you know at the 1600 you get free credits uh, just by creating a free account. So uh, I think you get they, they get replenished all the time because I know I downloaded something a couple weeks ago and it was back up to 15 so I don't know if you get 15 a month or a week or whatever anyway it was only two credits I only needed one texture today great gonna go into the material editor going to take one of my unused material slots if you're running out of material slots you can go down here into options and you can add more I'm not doing that right now because my old slowpoke computer really doesn't like rendering physical materials and each one of these is a little bit of a drag on your system. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I've got my six slots. Uh, at some point I'll probably have to expand this, but for now I'm safe. I'm going to choose standard. I'm going to choose physical material. 
and I'm going to take our uh, 1600 by 1000 image and load it in for the base color. So I'm going to bitmap. Doesn't necessarily have to be a bitmap, could be a JPEG or a PNG or whatever. Uh, that's just a really sort of old fashioned way of describing it. Um, there it is. So I'm going to assign this to my table. I'm going to set it up so that we can see this map in the editor, just so that we can see what we're working with UV wise. Obviously, it's quite stretched. So, no problem. 3ds Max has some pretty basic built in UV tools that save you the trouble of hand mapping it. Uh, we're going to choose box and I'm going to press fit. And now the trick here is, of course, we know that the longest side of our table is 48. I'm going to take and make the other sides 48 as well. And so that's just going to make sure that the texture is evenly distributed across. I guess our texture is not exactly square, so there's probably some math to be done there, but it, it's fine. It's much, much better than it was. We can see what's going on now. Um, so our next trick is actually we're not going to use a box UV. And the reason we're not is because we get this edge. I'm going to press uh, P and go away from my... I'm going to not hold my scroll lock key while I do that. I'm going to press P. And I'm going to go away from my camera, so we're, we're in perspective view. I'm not messing up our force perspective. I'm going to zoom in here, and you can see that you can, you can see the seam in our material. Now, the normal way to correct for that would be to take it into Photoshop, do a little clone stamp work, maybe copy a layer, move it around, whatever. That's not what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to cheat. So back to our force perspective, I'm going to hit C to go to our camera. I'm going to take our UV map and say, you know what? We don't need a box. We're going to use a planar UV map. And then we're just going to rotate the plane a few degrees. Um, and this, this only works from a force perspective. This would not work from other angles, uh, you know, if you had a more complex object. We only have two surfaces that this needs to work for. Whoopsie-daisy. Somewhere in there. That's probably fine. And so now the, the whole surface sort of faces us, uh, and that seam becomes non-existent. So, uh, like it, hate it, <laughs> let me know if you think that this is a monstrous uh, abuse of angles. But, works for me. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, obviously our wood texture can't be this glossy. So, uh, we've been using the physical materials for a lot of things that are very, like, shiny. Um, or have, like, like, gloss surfaces. Nope, not in this case. So how are we going to fix that? We're going to make sure there's zero coding. There should be if you had a default physical material. Next, we're going to go to the roughness, and we're going to crank this up. I think I took this up to about 0.9, and I got something much closer to what I wanted. Uh, let this render a little bit, yeah. Looks, looks much rougher. Now, you still we have this like glow around the edge, and I was trying to figure out what that was earlier. That's the index of refraction. Wood does not have an index of refraction, right? Uh, how much rays bend when entering the medium? Well, rays don't quite bend when they hit wood. Like, like maybe, maybe very small amounts. I could, I guess we could put 1.05 or something. But if you put like one, that's going to be very comparable. Let me see if I put one. 0.05. Okay, shouldn't should be roughly no difference. Um, just going to take a quick render of this, see what it looks like. Uh, that was one of my earlier renders. We'll get back there. So, yeah. Looks pretty good. Again, um, we're not quite done because it's looking a little flat, right? And we know that those those uh, gnarls and knots and crevices uh, need to be reflected somehow. So, the trick for that, in this case, is going to be a bump map. We could play around with a displace map. Let's see how bad that's going to be. I don't know how how this is going to look. I think this is going to be a disaster, but I'm going to try it. Here goes our displacement. Yeah, um, well, we would need a much higher mess resolution for one. Uh, much lower strength on our displacement for two. 
how many layers of open sub do we have? And we could take this up to like five layers and and try it. But I have a feeling much heavier. Oh, okay. All right, so it eventually comes through a little, but it's not actually on the same channel, I think, as our... Or there's a higher mesh density down there, right? Because of the way we did our thing. So um, you could play around with this place maps. You would have to pay more attention to your mesh and more attention to your UVs than I intend to. So back to the lazy method. <laughs> method. Um, three iterations of subdivision is fine. And uh, displacement is the wrong tool. <laughs> Wrong tool for this job. Oh, did I clear that out? Um, this should be just zero right anyway. I thought. Okay, so back to normal. Just had to go back and turn that map back on. And we're actually going to copy our map back down to the bump channel. Now you could like make this more powerful by going into Photoshop or more, or more precise uh, in where it's bumpy and where it isn't. Uh, I'm not worried about that today. I'm just going to copy what we have. The dark parts are deep. The bright parts are sticking up, um, generally, with wood. So there's nothing too complicated about it. There's no reason to make it grayscale, necessarily. 3ds Max does a fine job of that right in the bump channel. Um, so the default is 0.3. That might be actually enough. Let's, let's look at... Yeah, that's probably pretty good. I can go really nuts with it, right? and take it up to like one. Um, but with the bump channel, often less is more. You end up getting something that looks a little too crazy. Um, and th this down here just gets gets insane, in my opinion. So, is our UV map still doing what it's supposed to be doing? Yeah, it is. So, I think, um, I, know, I think like point, point 0.3 might be where it's at for the, let me, let me try point 0.1. I'm always fussing with these. Let's look at point 0.1, see what it looks like. Under that. Yeah, point 0.1 is pretty good. I go with that. It doesn't really need to be that crazy. So, less is more often with the bump map. It's just adding little subtle details that the eye can kind of pick up. Um, and you don't even have to be consciously too aware of them. So that's it for wood material, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, you could you could do more. You could do a lot more with like tiling or different kinds of coats. You know, if it's got a clear coat on it, um, or if there's like planks, that definitely has to be reflected more precisely in the bump map and in a specular map and things like that. Uh, but in this case, like looking at the original table, you know, it's it's a slab of wood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's got like knots and things in it. It looks like, you know, some piece of walnut from the Black Forest or something. So, ours isn't quite that pretty, uh, but it will get some more detail when we go ahead and put in our, uh, our like, uh, blended uh, paint layer. So that'll be, that'll be a whole other trick. For today, there's a few more things I've been wanting to get at. Ever since I started this project, I've been very frustrated with, like, the angles of the table relative to the grid and I spent way too much time setting it up and I think the table's just warped and the table ought to be warped like it's a it's a naughty old thing right so let's distress our table a bit uh, without without too much stress so where do we go well we'll want some noise we we'll want some basic noise that should be pretty easy uh, we can use a standard noise map uh, we could set the scale down to like 10 and make the strength very small. So here's the here's the x-axis. I really don't want to move it much. Less than 1. It's just a little subtle off curve there. Y-axis, same deal. I really don't want to budge it too much. Just, just make it a little funny there. Maybe. And then the z-axis, that's up and down. Yeah, very, very small amount. So just a slight warp. And then I'm going to put a bend on it. And this is a fun toy. I'm going to take the Benz Gizmo. I'm going to take the Move tool. You could affect the Gizmo just by uh, changing the pivot point before you put the bend on, but we can just do it after the fact. I'm going to move it down here. And uh, then I'm going to change the angle. Woo! Not 
probably not that much at all. Um, not on the y-axis, right? No. On the x-axis? X-axis. A slight negative angle, and you can see, like, this is way too much. Our table should not be bending that much. It's not a magic carpet. But if I put, like, negative 0.75, that will just satisfy my even even negative 0.5. I really don't want to put much on it. Yeah, that's fine. That will just satisfy my frustration with the with the alignment of of the grid um, to our world. I, c I just feel like there's a little curve on that table. So there it is, done. Uh, that's it for today. Good luck. Have fun. Stay safe.